wonderful June 2nd, 2010, live in Los Angeles, California. I'm a jazz rock violinist who enjoys interviewing great musicians who you're going to hear tonight, music industry power brokers, and talking about expanding music wherever it can possibly go. Tonight we have a guest with a great history and really great music. Hello, Marion Meadows. No, oh, how are you, buddy? <laughs> good. Very good, man. Good Thank to you. hear your voice. <laughs> a long time. Been a long time, Marion. <laughs> it has been. Yeah. So, you know, I, I guess your new single is Flirt. I was just looking that up. Is that what it's called? Well, actually, uh, that is the new single. Flirt, Flirt's the yeah. new single. It's from the uh, CD Secrets. And um, we're, um, yeah, we're at uh, number, well, for me, this is number 12 in terms of CDs, of total CDs, including my collecting from back in the RCA days. So we're, we're still churning them out, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wonderful, man. I love to hear you play. You know, there's a, there's a picture that you've had that you've been using. I just was looking at it about five minutes ago. And uh, it's the picture I've seen for quite a long time of you. And what it makes me think is that you're about to give us something. That's the expression. Somehow the photographer got you to do that or whatever. That was your thing, that you're about to just say something cool to us. And, I mean, I'm not blowing hot air up here. It's just that's what I'm seeing from you. And that's what you do, man. I love it. It's great, Marion. Oh, thank you, Noel. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, you know, I tend to come from an old school, uh, you know, where we grew up with incredible musicians surrounded by incredible music and uh Certainly the inspirations were many, and uh, life itself was inspirational. So to be an artist at that time when, uh, when we were growing up was, was a real blessing, and I'm glad I had an opportunity to share in that and continue to do so. You know, your, uh, your lines, sometimes when you play, uh, they make me think a little bit of old school, as you're just saying, Miles Davis and old school themes, that you have a, a couple of different uh, textures and instruments with your sax playing the lines. That's what used to happen before, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very nice just w walking around the theme, uh, and you really take yeah. that theme seriously. Yeah I, yeah, I do, because, you know, let's, you know, let's, let's look at where we came from when we were growing up, and we were taking the torch from incredible musicians like, uh, you know, Grover Washington, and, and of course, all the, the great names, but I came up playing um, you know, modern jazz, and as I got into con more contemporary jazz, uh, melody and tone were the most important components of my ex musical experience, and certainly that was what I was always taught, but it also translated into, you know, the, the spiritual, um, you know, evolution of where I was going musically, and it always involved uh, a sense of tone and melody, and a melody that was, uh, you know, not so predictable. Not you know, it would go different places, and at the same time, it was uh, you know, for me, uh, you know, I had sent you some other yeah, even though we might not get a chance to hear it, but the 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 the, the kind of the mood I've been going in lately is very ethereal and it's very it's a more quiet mood and um, um, just kind of a testimony to the way I was raised musically, really. So Bob James. Um, I know he influenced you. Mm, it did. Well, um, yeah. among many, and I also had the opportunity to briefly uh, get an opportunity living uh, in and around New York City. I, At the time, I was uh, commuting out to Connecticut and playing with bands in New York City. And one night after performing, actually was at Lincoln Center with a, with a wonderful group out of um, New York called the Aboriginal Music Society pretty much an avant-garde jazz approach, and um, we, uh, my friend and I had the opportunity to, you know, think about taking the horn out in Grand Central <laughs> and blowing uh, on it, <laughs> but no one's in the rotunda, which is like, you know, that's unheard of, because there's always thousands and thousands of people walking through Grand Central at this particular time. It was empty. Took the horn out, and I was playing, and the guy comes running up to me. Of course, I put it away, because I thought he was he was a security guard, <laughs> uh -huh. but he ended up being uh, he ended up being Jay Chadway. He worked with Bob James, and he was just blown away by that sound of my soprano, you know, uh, just permeating through that rotunda of Grand Central with that echo. And you know, I mean, it was it was just a beautiful thing for his ears, and it was beautiful for my ears. And then 
you know, the stars were in line for me to eventually meet Bob and go into the studio with him because of that meeting with Jay. The story is a little embellished these days because it goes on to say that I was playing in the subway, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> it's everything yeah. from I was playing in the subway to I was homeless, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, it, but it's, it's cool. It's all good. It's all good. Um, the end result of which is I, I got a chance to meet Bob. I got a chance to record with him and some of his incredible musicians from the Tap and Z days. And, uh, and yeah, and the, the rest is history. I went on to to stay in the contemporary jazz arena. It was kind of my for, foray into an introduction into the contemporary jazz uh, you know, format. And I, I got to meet and be a part of that genre. And, of course, you know, Grover was still alive at that time. David Sanborn is still very much alive and kicking. And those guys were the godfathers of the contemporary jazz movement, along with guys uh-huh. like Herbie Hancock and, you know, on and on and on. So we were fortunate to be at that time where we uh, could take over, like I said, the torch from these incredible artists to go on and um, set the next, uh, you know, thing on fire. And, uh, you know, we kind of, you know, we morphed a little bit into smooth jazz and as that did, that title. I never was a big fan of that, but a lot of the great artists that I had a chance to work with certainly are deserving of the recognition that they should have as contemporary jazz artists. And, you know, we can remove the whole stigma of smooth jazz title, and then com- what comes through is guys who were very conscious of melody and legacy and, and the continuation of music that at first has some electronic uh, components to it. But, you know, it's it, it, it all comes back around, and these incredible musicians that I've had the opportunity to work with, like Chuck Lowe and uh, Dave Valentine and Dave Samuels and... You know, this is a band I had in New York City called the, um, uh, you know, band of, of, of guys that I got a chance to play with uh, that was incredible, called the Fantasy Band, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, on and on and on. So my 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 foray into the train in New York City from Connecticut at those times before I had a chance to actually live there were adventurous ones, to say the least. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, the the mellow, uh, bluesy, soulful, communicating uh, themes that you play, Marion, um, uh, they you, you're choosing your notes. I know a lot of cats, young young players today. Don't when I would come into a session, for instance, because I was trained classically and I'm playing jazz, they would always be impressed right. with how fast I could play. You know, and they right. Could, Turn and say, man, it, ain't, it isn't speed at all. It's like, what are you saying? What do you want to say with your instrument? And that's what's so cool about you, Mary, and that you're that you're saying something. I guess I would call it blues, but whatever. Uh, and that's and that's what I'm getting. And, I, and as I as I play with younger people, I do want to let them know that they have a responsibility to talk to the audience, and that, that's your yeah. job. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think that's where we. We we pick up, uh, we take an intermission, and we pick up there, uh, musically speaking. Uh, as as music goes from, uh, you know, my you know my 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 path would be you know having a complete understanding and love for modern jazz, the John Coltrane's, you know, and the, even guys like Pearl Sand. I was a little bit a little bit more to the left because I was kind of a fire player on tenor with a lot of, with a lot of uh, emotion, which would translate into s- some real screaming on. Well, that's uh, worth that. That's worth that, of course, yeah. And then, and then as, I, as, I, as the soprano became a voice that kind of came, in, came through me and kind of came out of me, I, I started to find, um, still with the fire, I started to find these beautiful melodies um, that that horn was capable of, mm-hmm. and the well, that's what I'm well. hearing. That's what I'm hearing, Marion. Yeah, I but mean, that is uh, that's my that that's kind of like the voice that kind of you know if you were going to have reckless abandon and then you give of yourself and humble yourself and let that come through, then then you're absolutely right. That would be me if I were to say what is me. Well, that's cool. what it yeah, is absolutely. without even absolutely. trying. And yeah, bluesy at first, and certainly influenced uh, by all those who who certainly were my influences. And, yeah, and, uh, you know, Grover always told me to find your own voice, 
Uh, you can sit down and listen to my records or any other guy's records, you know, Sonny Zit or anybody, until you're blue in the face. But until you put those down and step out and become who you are on your own horn with your voice, then that's when you'll truly be a voice and one that people will recognize. So I'm glad I did that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what, 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 they, there's so many players out there. They don't. Nobody needs more players. Any more players are going to speak to them. But uh, I was uh, in uh, Brazil with Mary. I just want everyone here to know. And we went to a place where we were jamming. And Marion did ex- what he's talking about now, which is s- singing to you, singing with his sax. And then he took off, you know, a couple of times. I was just, you know, right there next to him listening to Marion do this. So you got to know, man, that this dude, you know, can go, can, it's, it's just great, Marion, how, how you'll go to different places, and uh, it's, it's very cool, man. You, you're going to be known for a long time, Marion, about your playing. Uh, thank you, no. Thank you, too kind. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> so, um, uh, have you ever, I haven't heard all your stuff, have you done an album uh, on your album with a singer? Yeah, I've, I've, in my last project, I actually uh, paid tribute to uh, two artists. Uh, one was Pat Metheny, and the other one was Bobby McFerrin. Uh, the song that Bobby McFerrin that I did of him was showcased uh, by a young, um, new up-and-coming artist who's sort of a crossover uh, folk slash, um, I don't know, contemporary singer and he comes from New Hampshire, but he sings a real song. So the thing that intrigued me about him was his voice and his his the way he executed. So I asked him to sing this Bobby McFerrin song, which he'd never even heard before, and it was a song called Friends. So the message was one that I wanted to put across because I, I feel as though that I've been blessed in a community of musicians that's been so gracious, uh, you know, like – for instance, you and I, you know, it's been, you know, a few years since we did the last Brazil thing. But, you know, you pick, we talk to each other on the phone, it's like we never missed a beat. That's the kind of people that I've had a chance to be around who I could truly call my musical friends. And, and in many cases, just actual, just friends, friends, you know. And this song was uh, a Bobby McFerrin song. And, and, the, and the gentleman that I got to sing, his name is Brian Chartran. Uh, incredible. Uh, execution of the song, so it's on the secret CD for anybody who wants to check it out. The so other song the, I did it's on the was, secret CD. I want everybody to know that it's on the secret CD. Yes. Song. Okay. Yeah. It, it is. In, it is indeed. So on the the other song that I did, which is not really a, it's not really a a vocal, you know, in terms of actual prose, it's, it's kind of like a doo wah 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 song in the background. But it's a here to stay, Pat Metheny song, and the background parts are done by this. Uh, same same fella and uh, Brian Chartran, who goes off on a different departure for him, which which just goes to show you that my without getting too far off the beaten path, that you know you combine com, combine vocalists with instrumentalists, and which has been going on you know since music started, uh, but you know with that in mind, with without really worrying about the boundaries of the music okay. that it has okay. to have you know, a particular commercial component to it that it's only a song and from beginning to end it's an adventure and it happens to be sung. So here's a guy who has the opportunity to, uh, you know, come come on board with us and we're all jazz artists, has the opportunity to come on board, do his thing, and then here we are, you know, have, you know featuring him on a jazz on a jazz record, so you know that was cool. Brian Chartrand, he's he he's the one to to watch out to keep your eye on the radar. So uh, when you have, I I have went through this issue myself. When you bring a singer on your album, your tune, and of course the tune is going to be introduced on the radio. Here's Marion Meadows playing blah 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 with the mm-hmm. singer. And mm-hmm. so you're sort of negotiating yourself around a singer, and I know a lot of guys have an issue with that because your album, your tune. Yeah, right, yeah. right. It's strange, you know. Well, you know, and that's interacting more, you know, and, and I've done, you know, I've had many, many vocalists on over the years. I, this is not the first time. I'm just speaking about the most mm-hmm. recent experience and, and how it came to be. Each each individual uh, track that you experience with a vocalist at 
you know, when it's on your CD. And again, that's right. You're inviting a person to come on to share in your space and your spotlight, and they get a chance to come over. And, and then you get, and then at that point, you can just say, "Well, I'm going to step back and feature this person because it doesn't always have to be saxophone, saxophone, saxophone." Mm-hmm. That's always the way I felt about it. Even on stage, I don't feel as though that I always have to be hogging the stage all the time, and my musical Absolutely. space has to be the only one filled, and therefore give the opportunity to my band members to to shine as well, which 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 creates a much more harmonious and giving uh, a musical environment. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but vocalist, hey, you know, I wish I could sing. Because <laughs> it would be me. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you do, man. But, you know, and it, we, and in, in an email to you earlier, I was gonna, we were going to talk about where maybe we were thinking music or jazz was sort of sliding to, not going, but sliding to. And as I talked to interview different people, last week was uh, Clarence McDonald, a great keyboard player. And uh, mm-hmm. I, was, I was mentioning percussion. I'm a, I'm a percussion freak, I guess, because I play with a bow. You know, I just love percussion and being in the pocket when I can be. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and so uh, I'm just, for myself, you know, I, I, I think percussion can be kicked up and both in the mix and the writing. Uh, I agree with that, sure yeah. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. I'm, I, I'm, you know, I don't usually, I, I don't have the opportunity to love to use percussionists, and I'm, and I have a show coming up soon that I've invited a very special guy. His name is Todd Chuba. He does the talk, you know, plays the, um, you know, that little, the little talking drum thing that that oh, you yeah, know sure, that the yeah. guy sit on, and he does this very special percussion. He's also a great, great drummer. Uh, but I'm excited about that because. As the years have gone on, and I've always used percussion on most of my songs, for sure. I've had great percussion, Louis Conti, to, just to name a few. I mean, go on and on and on, many, many great percussionists. And, um, but um, live-wise, this is going to be a, a nice departure for me because I've been using, uh, not using a percussionist. And uh, I did a show, oh, I think maybe a month ago with Kaylee Minucci, with this incredible percussionist singer. And, uh, you know, um, uh, Phil Hamilton is his name. And Phil mm-hmm. Hamilton is the most incredible uh, sing. I mean, he sings on my song, Urban Angels. And I hire, so, you know, you know how this thing goes. We, we share in each other's, you know, musicianship and each other's, you know, love and the passion. And here's a guy who plays percussion and sings. I mean, you know, what are we talking about That's here? Cool. It's all, it, isn't it beautiful? It's, just, it's like a, it's, it's a wonderful flower. Well, going going off of a percussionist, playing off a percussionist, uh, for me anyway, you know, because I said I'm playing with a bow, uh, you know, and right. there they are in the pocket doing the thing, and I go off them, and it's just wonderful. I love it, man. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, though. Yeah. So uh, what, what – I've heard this term new jazz, alternative jazz. I mean, maybe I'm raising an issue that really isn't even important to raise, but – you know, there's talk about smooth jazz, where it's going, contemporary jazz, and names. You know where you have those uh, on the Internet, you, you name what style this is, and you have a pull-down, a snap-down with an arrow, and you have to name right. the style. What the heck? You know, oh, is this blues? Is this mm-hmm. contemporary jazz? And, you know, these categories drive us crazy, you know? I think it's just a search to re-identify where smooth jazz. Uh, there were some powers that, that be who were part of the um, the definition and the creation of smooth jazz, and then at first the artists propped it up and did a wonderful job creating uh, a genre and a format. A format. Um, at the end of the day, uh, unfortunately, some of those powers that be kind of let those musicians, including yours truly and, and you as well, down, uh, only from the standpoint that they were kind of pulling the plug on smooth jazz at radio, smooth jazz, the quantification of what the music was, and therefore trying to dictate that smooth jazz artists had to play a certain kind of music with a, with a, with a certain style to it. And then, it, and then, and then to, uh, you know, say you could or could not have vocals or this or that. And you know what I mean? It's so it, 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 was like, it was like trying to tell musicians what they needed to play when they needed to play it. So that wasn't cool at all. I don't think any art form, any music ever said, you had, you got to play it this way or play it that way. So I think for such incredibly experienced, gifted, 
and train musicians to all of a sudden have to have a format and a formula to go by that it became disenfranchising. And so now they've just kind of, you know, said, well, we don't really need to be called smooth jazz artists, quote unquote, because we, we all came from, as I said before, the contemporary passing of the, of the, of the, of the baton. And so contemporary meaning that it's the next version of the style of jazz, which is what is that would be next? Is that, well, maybe that's a, you know, an owl in the background, you know, doing an owl call, who knows? But, yeah. but, but I just think that contemporary jazz is what it always was. You know, they used to call it new adult contemporary, and it was cool jazz and smooth jazz. But, you know, uh, traditional jazz artists, in terms of guys who play the most acoustic music that you can play with a slightly amp, uh, amplified bass, upright bass, and piano and drums, uh, for the most part, uh, would be uh, considered, uh, you know, con- uh, straight-ahead jazz artists and or traditional jazz artists that covers every style from avant-garde to modern jazz. And then there are the guys who experimented with electronic instruments, more electronic guitars, from the days of Herbie Hancock and and Mahavishnu and Chick Corea. So having said that, whatever it's going to be, it's still going to be the next phase of an artist as he becomes contemporary in his own time or in the future. So I just, you know, I I, I don't really mind people coming up with titles if it's urban jazz or new urban jazz. Yeah, uh, right. We're, we're, we're just jazz musicians. We, we like to mm. improvise and we like to put our, our souls and spirits out on the line and to connect with uh, our fans and potential new fans. So, you know, with that in mind, we'll we'll call it, um, you know, we can even call it world music. Uh, Man, you know, really, world you, just gotta be on, you just got to be honest yeah. with what you want to go to next, which you just said, right. you know, what you feel your next tune is. And you're making me think that, uh, of course, as I'm looking at a monitor or screen of the Internet, that it's, it's become so democratic and so individual that Marion Meadows, Noel Webb, mm-hmm. you know, what is their next individual feeling thing? I was just mentioning percussion. You mentioned you want to be a little more mellow. And it, it, it's, that's where it's going to go for Marion Meadows. That's what's going right. to happen. And that's the end of that. That's the end of the question because he's going to be honest with himself. So there you go. Uh, you know, right. as far as hits are concerned, you know, I mean, as, I, as, it's funny here. On, in rock, the because I, I, I think people are a little bored with what you just just described as being where they had to, you had to play that certain style, whatever that was. Last year, uh, the number seven album in rock bestseller was Andrew Bocelli. Number three was Susan Boyle. And wow, all, is that right? All of rock. Do that. Take that. So that tells you how, you know, they're looking, they're looking around, what's Marion going to do, what's uh, uh, Jeff Beckham do, you know, it's Noel, whatever, you know, let's get going here. They're looking for stuff, and, uh, and we're yeah. going to give it to them. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, and we don't know any better. <laughs> That's what we know. <laughs> and and please so, do so, because I, I certainly do champion that music uh, go, progresses and that we have a very active role in educating and re-educating our children yes. as they come up, giving them an opportunity to dig into the treasure chest that we have so been so fortunate to be a part of. Uh, we, we didn't even come out of the treasure chest. We're still digging in the treasure uh, chest and certainly come uh, on in this room for the next generations to dig down because that's a really deep chest of some incredibly rich art, uh, everything from music, dance, to theater, to old movies. So there's a lot in there to dig around and find. That, that that will certainly be stimulating to the young uh, uh, the the young artist to be. Yeah, you know, I was talking about the interview last week uh, with Clarence McDonald. He he got very passionate, almost angry, and said, "It is the responsibility." He really emphasized the word that you, that each of you guys is talking to me. You have to grow. If you just sit there, you know, and just play mm-hmm. the thing you've been playing and being successful, mm-hmm. you know, it's your responsibility to grow as an artist. So that's what you have to do. Yeah, don't. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, in a lot of ways that's true because, you know, we know when we sit inside our own, you know, mundane, and then, you know, we stri- we, you know we'll, we'll, we'll strike out at some point, you know, and sitting wherever we're sitting idle, but musically we always will strike out itself, even if it's never to be heard by somebody in public, but we, we always grow. We can't help it. That's what art so, does. So, Marion, how about a... How about a, um, an orchestra for you? I, I see maybe you've been playing one. I don't know. Uh, 
That would be nice, and I've been thinking about how I can get that done. Um, my good friend Michael LinkedIn had the opportunity to play with the Jakarta Symphony, and uh, you just never know. I mean, I certainly did go to school to take orchestra. <laughs> I wouldn't mind using that someday, but even if I can't use it, I'd like to play in front of a full. Yeah, well, Chris Bode just know, travels around orchestra. one. And, by the way, everyone should yeah. know this is Marion Meadows. I've gotten the line if, you, if I didn't say that enough. But, uh, uh, yeah, an orchestra, so, yeah, that would be cool. Wow. Really, really, really would be nice. <laughs> So, so, you thank know, you we, that plug four, right here. Four, we have about three or four minutes left, Mary, and I want to make sure everyone knows uh, your, your new single is called Flirt, and mm-hmm. it's on the album. What's the album? It's called Secrets. The, the album's called oh, Secrets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Flirt is a single, and uh, we are uh, getting ready to go back into the studio again. Um, you know, we're kind of reshaping and... Um, you know, I also before we go, I wanted to let you know that I'm I've embarked on a uh, on a very exciting um, venture. If you got a second, I'll tell you about it. Yeah, it's, please. Uh, okay, it's uh, it's uh, I've started a musician's social networking. Uh, it's going to be called the Cats sites, the Jazz Cats, and this will be networking for uh, we have we have sax cats, uh, piano cats, guitar cats, bass cats. Uh, drum cats, and uh, obviously we're going to have to get a violin on this cat. Hey, <laughs> so, baby, come um, in. <laughs> and that's right. And, and, and we're going to have all, you know, Trump is all that. So these are social networking sites which self-identified, which will be uh, for the professional musicians and fans. Uh, there will be music referral services involved in these sites where musicians will Good. go to town, and they will have uh, top sidemen available with their schedules uh, virtually available in each town. When a guy gets into a uh, situation, they can go to this virtual uh, um, um, calendar, see where guys might be available and how you can get in touch with them. There will be a, there'll be a, a sort of built-in uh, Jazz Cats eBay for guys who are trying to, you know, one guy wants, a, wants an old DAP machine and another guy wants to sell one and a guy wants to sell a, a Boss Reverb. So, we're going to have that as well, and there's going to be lots of uh, blogging about, you know, instruments, what kind of setups you play, uh, on and on and on for stuff for, well, for so guys. I'm getting and, chat questions about where can, they continue, where can they hook up now to that, or how can they keep in touch with that, Marion? Well, right now they can sign up at Jazz Cats with a K, and all the cats will be with a K, so it will be at Sax Cats, which is online right now, saxcatswithak.com. And you can sign up for it. The sites will be start to come up in the next month or two. They're going to be up full, fully functional and running. And uh, we, we will be um, rolling down the road. And it's going to just be really, really cool because I'm going to give an opportunity for the gen- journalists on the sites will be the musicians themselves. So I'll have like Gerald Albright writing about Branford Marsalis and uh, – you know, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, Rick Braun writing about Miles Davis. So it'll be just so cool because it'll be driven by musicians for musicians, and the fans will certainly come there and just have a ton of fun because I want the guys to tell some of their road stories and mm. really just kind of have a really great time. As and there'll be downloads. We're gonna we're gonna feature CDs that are hard to get, uh, up and coming artists. Uh, we're going to feature all of the facets worldwide, guys from Russia, from oh, South America, great. from South Aaron, Africa. I'm going to say, I'm gonna, this is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to that whole thing. Uh, uh, the show is just about to end. Uh, Mary, thank you, thank you very much, man. This is Marion Meadows. Uh, this is Expand Music with Noel. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, thank you very, very much, Marion. And we'll bring you back Thanks, next Noel. time because you're just great. All the best. Thank you. Anytime. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.